Okay, I know you guys won't believe this, but some of the things that I do don't work. Well, I've missed a few things, and I want to welcome you to my 43-year, almost another month or so will be 44. So, uh, you know, at this age, you know, used to, you know, if you have babies, you know, how old are they? Oh, six, six weeks, eight weeks. I'm thinking, are you kidding? I was like, that's closer to zero. Well, at my age, you know, I could go by a decade, and it doesn't make much either way. But anyway, 43-year journey uh, that I have to minimize my inadequacies. So you'll have the opportunity to skip a step and learn from the things I've overlooked. And you will already know probably 90 plus, 99% of what I'm going to say today. The only difference is I may look at it from a little bit different perspective. And then you'll not only know what I know, you'll know what you know, then you'll know more than I know. Here's where I come from. Uh, a little bit of naturopathy, structure, general dentistry, head, neck, and facial pain from different organizations. Uh, Diploma, the uh, pain, what is it, Diploma, uh, Academy of Pain Management, and then uh, sleep and breathing disorders. So that's, uh, which really doesn't mean a thing. All it really means, uh, all that really matters is what do we do with what we have in the chair. So don't, none of that stuff matters. Now look at this title. Can you kidding? It's like the title of the entire thing all in one. But there's only so much, there's only so much word, uh, room for the words up there. Now, I'll just get to it. Every tooth is on an acupuncture meridian. The body is a structure. There's the structure part. It's held together head to toe with fascia. And meridians run through the fascia. And what I'm going to do is throw a bunch of pieces out there. And pretty soon we'll collect them. And I want to read what is on the little sign that you passed on the way in. We are forging the future, I-A-O-M-T. We are forging the future in oral health integration so that dental and medical professionals can connect the puzzle pieces in whole body health. This is just a few of the pieces, and I'm going to put a few of them together. I do not profess to have the entire picture, but I'll just talk to you a little bit about a few, uh, few parts that I deal with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, we talked about the meridians that go through the fascia and trails. Airway affects structure, metabolism, facial development. And you know what's really nice is I've already been set up with Michael Gelb, Joy Moeller, and Bill Hang. Already, they, they told you all this already. I'm just going to put a few of these little pieces together. But you already have the good stuff. Now, an unhealthy tooth or jaw joint is a dental component that can affect flow or chi. And none of that, none, get into that Middle Eastern ethereal stuff. Chi just means life force or energy. And where it is in acupuncture actually is this electrical current. If you want to know more about that, get in touch with Dr. Tennant, who you've had here at this place. He'll take you all the way down to the cellular level and intracellular level. Uh, acupuncture, uh, the chi goes through the acupuncture meridians and can be a source of infection or structural irritation. A tooth can. I mean, just get down to the basics. An abscess tooth, it's about that far from your brain. You don't want that to happen. So this is the basic stuff we've known since dental school. Collagen, here's where it gets to me, it gets fun, a little bit nerdy. It's a fiber-like structure uh, responsible for, P it has a, a constituents in it in the collagen that uh, have piezoelectric properties. The piezoelectric saw in there has the same thing, it uses that. It's a little bit different here. But what that refers to is that if a material, so it's like a cholesterol, uh, uh, crystal. It can even be a liquid cholesterol crystal. Electrical signal. Conversely, if an electric signal is sent to a distorted crystal, it will just the opposite of distort. It will undistort. Have you ever wondered why some of the electrical modalities work? Put a TENS unit on and you start feeling better, more relaxed. Works on a lot of different levels. But one is through the piezoelectric properties of the collagen. And that's the collagen. It's part of the fascia that connects us all the way from cell level all the way through the body. Now, certain areas are more dense than others. We'll get into that. But anyway, that's the way some of this works. Correlation. Did I just skip a bunch of steps? 
I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm good. Okay. Uh, there's a correlation between TMJ problems, and that's where a lot, I've treated uh, TMJ people for 30 plus years, pushing 40. Uh, and there's a correlation that I noticed, not a cause and effect really, but a correlation between breast problems, thoracic surgeries, abdominal issues. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read all these things. See, I know you would love for me to, but if you want to look at these, you can just get them. You've got all this stuff in your notes just like I do, and you can pour over them. But if I go a little faster, then I don't bore you. And you can go back and look at the things you like a lot and the stuff you don't like much. I've already gone past it, so it didn't bother you very much. Now, read between the lines in your health history. Now, who was it that brought that up? I think both Michael Gelb and Bill Hang. Look at the health history and see what's coming up. Is it so important that they have hypoglycemia? Mm -hmm. uh, thyroid, hypothyroid, maybe broken a leg here or there. What does all this mean if you put all this stuff together? And I always thank the patients when I get through, when they, the new patients, I'll sit down and say, I want to thank you for filling all this stuff out because each one of these things by itself might not mean so much, but together they tell me a good story. And never have one of them, has any of them ever said, shucks, I wish I hadn't spent the time on that. Because you're talking about them. They like for you to talk about them. And even if you're finding something that's wrong with them, then you're finding the bad guy. If you know where the bad guy is, you know where to swing. And it's going to help them get better. And they didn't come there to get worse or stay the same. They came there to get better. I asked them to write down a chronological history. I have a page that just has lines on it. And it just says, what have you, what's happened to you? Get, get married, having a fall, slip on the ice, get bucked off a horse, sports injuries, automobile accidents, so forth. Then I have them draw that on this little silhouette. If you want a copy of it, call the office, email me, I'll send this to you. You can take my, my name off and put yours on it until you get your own. Do it any way you want. Now I'll give you an example of this. This lady wanted to make sure that everybody knew she was a girl one and not this amorphous thing that I had, okay? So this is her describing her mommy makeover. Now, that can, that can be very significant because it is where most of us have our surgeries, thoracics and ab abdomen. Women overwhelmingly more in the thoracic area than us men. But let's just describe what we're seeing here. There we go. You'll own a mommy makeover, and this will not be the only one that you'll ever see, is they literally take the nipples off and move them up. Slice, cut, cut, cut. It's called an anchor cut. They move it up, put some implants in there, get them a little firmer. And then on the tummy, they just cut out a little fat right here and just tuck in the shirt. And afterwards, they don't stand up straight. It's like they've tucked their shirt down into their shoes and they hardly stand up. So think about what that's doing to you structurally. Now, what happens when you bend over forward? Okay, your jaw goes straight back to the back of the socket. If you're TMJ, that's exactly where you don't want it. What about airway that we've been talking about? Okay, the butt teeth got to get forward so I can breathe. Okay, okay. and what does that do also? If you, if you put, have your jaw back, it squeezes the airway in the thoracic area. So you're doing a lot of things that are hard on that person. Now, again, I learned this. I, don't, I had to look all this stuff up. I didn't know it. Now, let's go to what else is going on. Since you tuck the stomach skin down, then you have to open, cut a little hole there for a new um, belly button. Can't go without a belly button. And little black ones where she had gallbladder surgery. Little black one under the chin, enough for a major scar. She fell on her chin. How hard is it to fall on your chin and not have a TMJ problem? <clears throat> it's a hard, <clears throat> excuse me. And then up on the spear part of the pro, uh, orbit, another scar, episiotomy, and then down here, do we see that one? A broken leg that was so severe she had to have a uh, rod and then screws to hold it in place. Bone knits in about six weeks. But when you've got a lot of weight bearing on one leg, then it takes a while for that to get 
where you can do more than ride, ride on a scooter and uh, then get it rehabbed so that you can walk normally. What happens is the problem comes and goes, but the strength differential remains. And what that gives us in the pelvis, you get a torque, twist, tilt. What sits on the pelvis? The spine that goes up to the skull that just sits on the spine and the mandible, which we're responsible for, just hangs from the skull. So the area that we are responsible for is totally subject to the posture. And this is the foundation. Those legs just go to the floor. That's the foundation. Okay, again, TMJ disorders have a correlation with breast problems, thoracic problems, and pelvic problems. These are the references if you want to read about it over and over again. <clears throat> All right, women seem to manifest TMJ symptoms more often than men. This is an explanation. Doesn't mean we know all the answers, but this is one of the explanations, is that they, uh, there are estrogen uh, receptor sites in the joints. Women have more estrogen. Men and women have TMJ problems about 50-50, about the same, but women manifest the symptoms, primarily headaches and neck aches, about nine to one to men. So obviously there's a hormonal, a physiological, and a structural element there. See, we're getting all those words in that title. We're kind of starting to put a few of them together. Okay, the uh, Practical Pain Management is a journal that's uh, uh, electronic. Talks about acupuncture and says it offers useful treatment modality in the management of TMD. And it's a useful additional technique. You can do, T, uh, you can do acupuncture all day long and it's not gonna fix a structural defect in a temporal mandibular joint. But what it will do is if you're treating the TMJ, it'll make you look better. And that's what I tell them, because they'll get well faster. It'll take care of some of these other physiologic things, metabolic things that are uh, stirring the pot, so to speak, that are adding to it, that are exacerbating the problem. So it's not just the acupuncturist, but that's just one thing to look at. And we're going to look, talk about a few other things. Actually, if nothing else, so if your treatment doesn't go the way you want it to, you'll have some other places you can look that'll help. There's the references for all that. And this, these, those are the spots near the TMJ. These are distal ones. And don't worry, your slides won't get all those marks on them. But <clears throat> what happens here is that you might get treated around the joint, the distal ones, they might treat on the hand or the foot. And it gets kind of complicated. That's why I send to an acupuncturist. I'm not good enough on my own. But they study a lot and it's, uh, it, it's very complicated in some sense and we don't always understand it. But one of the things I use for an illustration is you get a three-year-old kid, hold him in your arms and take him to the light switch. He knows he can thump that light switch up and the lights come on. He doesn't know anything about electricity, LEDs, or tungsten uh, filaments. What he knows is you flip it up, the light comes on, push it down, the light goes off. So sometimes we can use things that we don't totally understand. And I'm into that because there's a lot of stuff I don't understand. Meridians and teeth. Again, every two-sone acupuncture meridian, it's a correlation and not necessarily cause and effect. Uh, structure sedates and stimulates. Our acupuncture uh, sedates and stimulates. That's why... You can have a, uh, an acupuncturist work in one area that will help stimulate the pancreas. Maybe the uh, uh, insulin requirements will go down. On the other hand, you can get a, an acupuncturist that will stimulate some other areas or actually not stimulate but sedate the areas so that someone can have an appendectomy with zero anesthesia. It's not always the same with everybody. Some people that just doesn't work on them. There's a rationale for that. Again. There's also the noxious input of a tooth, which can either stimulate or sedate the other organs or structures along that acupuncture meridian. As we already covered, every tooth is on an acupuncture meridian. Imagine having a big abscess on it or a big giant amalgam or something else where a, a, a cavitation and all the things on that acupuncture meridian are affected. Maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. Doesn't mean you've got to fix all that. It just means to be aware of it in case you don't get as good a results as you want. Okay, the best chart by far that I've seen came from Glenn King, and that's the way you find it. Look at that blue stuff down the bottom. 
It's the most complete and covers the most things. He uses it. It's a key method and it's, it uses spheres rather than meridians. But to tell you the truth, in real life, we're not like a globe with those perfect lines, lateral and horizontal. Okay, charts are general. Wisdom teeth, kind of wild cards. They can affect anything anywhere in the body. And all teeth can affect meridians maybe on one side of it besides just it because everybody is not the same. And uh, teeth can also affect not only the things ipsilateral but also contralateral. Now, let's look at this one. Where do the meridians on these premovers go? Because there's no premovers here. Right there. Not any over here. So, where do those meridians go? I don't know the answer to that because it's going to be different with different people. Usually, they'll go to one of the teeth on either side of it. But sometimes, it's just a real skinny one right down there between them. It's, it doesn't matter if we know or not. If we get them to an acupuncturist, they'll find what, where it works. Here's something to also keep in mind throughout our, what, we, what we do and why everybody doesn't react the same to, the, to what we know is a really good protocol. These are models. All of them are probably 20s to mid-30s. All of them have eyes, ears, and noses, but none of them look alike. Same for our internal anatomy, same for our physiology. So we can't have a cookbook that works on everybody all the time. Cookbook's not bad. It's a good place to start. But then we ultimately have to learn how to tweak it a little bit. Here's what acupuncture lines look like. Some are different. These are cow trails. Anybody from the country knows what. It, why don't cows walk in a straight line? I don't know, but they don't. And some of, the, uh, some of the acupuncture meridians are like this. Some are pretty much straight. Some zigzag, and some go from one to another. And some of them go in, curl back internal. Most all of them go internal. Now remember, acupuncture dentistry, structure, they all interact with each other. Okay, let's talk structure just a minute. Let me ask a question. There's the same guy. Tell me, he had orthodontics while they took those teeth out. Why are these teeth crowded? Joy knows. Bill Hang knows. Okay. Airway, what about structure? What happened to his body all these years? Sports injuries, got a twist, got pull. Oh, did I just skip one? Okay. Fascial restrictions can compromise treatment. Okay, we already know that. Now, here's where we're going to answer the question. Is it an airway problem, a swallowing problem, or a tongue tie? Or maybe it's more than one of those. Which one are you going to not do? I can tell you when I do the TMJs now, the TMJ treatment, if they've got a tongue tie, I'll always do that first. That might be all it takes to get them to a place where the body says, hey, I can take it from here. But if I don't do it and treat the TMJ problem, I'm going to hit a low ceiling. We'll get better, but not better enough. And then go back there and cut the tongue. Do it either way you want. Just the way I do it. Don't cut the tongue. Cut the fascia, the, the restricted tissues. Okay, how does this swallow work? It goes... Up and back. Joy Motor was telling us that earlier. Now, this is just a little picture I made for another lecture. That's where you cut the frenum. Go right in the middle of that thing. Stay away from the tip of the tongue and stay away from the uh, salivary ducts. And just cut connective tissue. When you see the muscles in there, that's when you stop. And some people just have longer tongues than others. Sometimes the wound to be little, and that's all you're going to get. Some people be able to lick their forehead, <laughs> which is not really your goal, although I've, I've had a couple of guys that were real happy about it. <sighs> I'll move on. Oh, let's look at the muscles of the tongue. We've talked about this this morning, too. You've got a muscle that goes from the chin to the tongue, inside of the mandible, from the skull to the tongue, styloglossus, glossus, hyoid to the tongue. Hyoid's free flow, it's the only bone in the body, it doesn't articulate with another bone. 
Where are we going here? Okay. Let's just look. This, I had to make this up. This is, this is a tongue that's tethered with bungee cords to the mandible, to the hyoid, and to the skull. And these are little strips uh, that are like a, no, well, flat bungee cords, like tie-down straps. Goes through the, the uh, digastric, goes through a little sling in the hyoid, up to the mastoid process. Then there's the genio-hyoid from the mandible down to the sternum, uh, with the sternum hyoid, sternal hyoid, and then the omohyoid from the hyoid down through the clavicle, a little sling in the clavicle, to the scapula. Now, tell me, is there a connection between the shoulder and the tongue? The answer is yes. You can hold all this stuff real still and still move your tongue. You can hold all this throat right up here real still, still move your shoulder. But ultimately, this is not what it's like in real life. This is just an illustration. I mean, I, I made this up and got a professional artist to make it so that you could see it and understand it. And I want it diagram, diagrammatic. If you look this up in Netter, it's full of fashion. There's 900 of them muscles right there. And that's just on this side. So, what's the point of this? None of these muscles act all by itself. They all act together. And there's fascia, bundles of fascia. So you can't really move one part without tugging on something else. We'll get another look at that in just a minute. This is a dissection, anatomy trains. It's one of, the, it's one of, your, and, uh, one of the things in the books, the references at the end. If you don't get anything, but just get the book and look at the pictures. Kind of like that. You know, I go through the pictures, and if I get interested, I'll read some of the words. But if you don't do anything but read, look at the pictures, you'll be a better person when you come out at a better uh, a dentist. Okay, toes, knee, pubic symphysis. This is the diaphragm, respiratory diaphragm. And whoa, look at that. Tongue right there in that mouth that we work on. All right. Phrenectomies. Why would we want to take that away? Because when I'm taking it up to there, see that lip's not up to the nose, it's just barely up. And it's blanching because it's so tight. Generally speaking, a, uh, the lip tie is the deal breaker for nursing. Because the baby can't flange up and get up and over the breast, can't get the tongue down underneath and get a seal. Then the whole thing is just this. And suction draws get the letdown, get the drainage, it actually feels good. On a bad day, it feels neutral, but it doesn't hurt. When it's tied like that, they can't do it. That tongue can't get underneath, so the baby gums it. Human babies have two instincts. One is suckling, the other is survival. When the suckling isn't going well, they don't check with mom to make sure it doesn't hurt. They go for lunch, no matter what. <laughs> and let me tell you, there's some ladies that come in that are ready because it, uh, I mean, there's a lot of nerve endings there, which is really nice for the pleasure part, but double bad for the pain part. Now, what does this have to do with acupuncture? There's a conception vessel that literally, rather a governing vessel that starts right here and goes all the way around the bottom and body and then comes up through the bottom. The conception vessel goes surface all the way out and then comes up through the bottom. Oh, and it attaches. They, when, they, when you put your tongue right there, it kind of completes the circuit, so to speak. So the energy, literally the electricity, it's low voltage, let me tell you, but it does flow. Now we're going to cut away from that and come back in a minute. This is what you look like if you swallowed a dog biscuit. I don't know why they put that in there. Okay, now watch that tongue again, up and back. There it is, up and then back, got to go way up there. And that tongue can't get up there if it's tied to the floor. Here's another one. Okay, look at it right there. And that black part, that's the teeth. That's not a space, that's the teeth. Remember where that uh, conception, where that, it was showed that the tongue completes the circuit and where Joy Moeller told us we ought to be having our tongue all day, made me feel guilty. Okay, here's another one. You can tell this is a man because he smacks his lips. But see, he just throws it on back. Now, 
Back to this one. Keep this in mind all day long because we're working up here. But this gets affected by all this and vice versa. The closer to it, the more the effect is. But the more chronic it is, the more effect it is. So something chronic down here can affect it up there in, in due time. Okay, these are maps of the anatomy trains, the very dense or stiff parts of the uh, fascia. Toes, knees, pelvis, pubic symphysis, up to the sternum, then up to the mastoid processes, right next to the TMJ. Okay, there's the babies. Now, what does that tell you? No baby is symmetrical inside the womb. They're kind of folded up and none are symmetrical. One of the best favors you can do for that kid is get them to a massage therapist, uh, cranial sacral therapist, chiropractor, really. And they don't crack their back. They work on the connective tissue. And one of the beneficial side effects, but it wouldn't be a side effect to them because they mean to do it, is that the babies that have a lot of reflux, I mean, I can guarantee you there's no baby that's ever been born with a deficiency of Nexium. And I've seen them, two, three weeks old, Nexium. What happens is all this internal tissue is right into the gut. They have a stomach about that big, half full of air because they don't have a good latch. And they ache, arch their back, and they cry when they're eating, and then they want more, and then they cry again. And the mom was thinking, what's wrong? Must be me, I'm a bad mom, I got bad milk. Oh, kid is just kinked up inside and needs some relief. See, you just find all kind of stuff in here. Why am I working on babies anyway? I never would have thought in a million years or a million two years that I would ever work on a baby. They don't even have teeth. In fact, I had a kid in the office one time, a pretty precocious kid, and he walked in and he looked down, there's a baby in a basket in one of those old carry things. And he just walks around it and looks. He goes, What's she doing here? She hadn't even got kneecaps. <laughs> and it's a pretty good observation. What's a baby doing at a dentist? I never would have thought until I had some mothers that really wanted to nurse and couldn't. Okay, this is another illustration of the uh, deep front line. It's not so much superficial, it's deeper. Back on the inside of the legs, up through here, up through the anterior part of the spine and the neck, and guess where it goes? Right to the tongue. That's, and this is part of what was dissected a while ago. There it is in the baby. Now you can kind of see why good body work on a baby will help a lot, not only with torticollis, but also the uh, digestion. Torticollis, is that for you? Did they prefer one breast more than the other? Yeah, it's because that baby's been in the womb like this for seven or eight months. And it's like, okay, it's easier to get to that one than that one, so I'm gonna prefer this one. And the mom's saying, well, I just don't produce enough milk over there. Well, give it some work and you'll start getting some more. But the poor kid's got to learn to be able to go over there without too much tension. Okay. Diaphragms. We all know about the respiratory diaphragm. There's the pelvic diaphragm. There's also the hyoid or the cervical diaphragm. And then the diaphragm, the dura, skull. Now, look at this. This tight line goes all the way down here. So tension down here, or adhesions, we'll get to that in a minute, can affect all the way up to the dura. What do you think that does to us um, structurally, emotionally, when you've got things right up in here that uh, deal with emotion? Uh, and you think, how can structure deal with emotion? Okay, get somebody to pull on you all day long. Can you do your job very well? If something's pulling on one of the organs all day long, like tension because it's got an adhesion, it can affect the way it uh, functions. Okay, move on. Another illustration of the fascial lines. Okay, here, 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 and I'm going to draw this one. Remember this one. We're going to come back to it. And how many of us have ever felt anything there? Okay, where'd that come from? Am I saying you can't swallow, breathe, move a shoulder without affecting the tongue? Yes. And, and a word, yes. Plus all the acupuncture parts and uh, points in between. So let's look at that. 
There are all the acupuncture points on the face. Those are superficial, but they're also deep enough that they go right through the teeth. Now, here's the adhesions. This is the uterus. That round ligament. That snowberry. What are these things? Okay, this is through a laparoscope. That's this tight stuff. This is a little easier to see because it's, <clears throat> excuse me, a diagrammatic representation. Remember what I said a while ago about the governing vessel going all the way back down here and inside? And then this inside. So where's all this? It's right in here. So can that affect more than just posture? Yes. Now, remember, pelvis to the TMJs and tongue to the pelvis. That's why it matters to the dentist. Okay, C-sections. You ask your patients if they've ever had a C-section? It gets back to the posture. How we hold our head determines how we hold our jaw. Okay? You can lean your head this way and tap your teeth, lean your head this way and tap your teeth, this way and tap your teeth, and back and tap your teeth. And you'll have four different teeth that touch first. Okay? And the joint's not but as big as your end of your little finger, but posture determines how we hold our head. And it has a lot to do with our TMJ. And this has a lot to do with how we stand and hold our head. Now that looks a little brutal. Actually, it works pretty well. It leaves a thin scar, and then you go in and take them out. Now here, we have a scar that's a little bit red and ropey. What we want in a scar is for it to be thin and white. And if you have colored skin, then you want it to be thin and either just slightly dark or slightly lighter than your skin color. But you don't want red, thick, and ropey because that's just a signal for adhesions internally. Now, what do you do about adhesions? Well, you can work on them. You can tease them loose. I don't care if you'd have an adhesion in there that's that long. What I don't want is an adhesion that's this long, but you need this much space because that's what will affect the posture. Now, look at this again. What's this bruising? This is where the C-section is. Now, just remember, she's lost a lot of her baby. Not baby, but where her baby was, baby volume. Okay, now, the baby was up in here. So when they open here, they do a vertical incision along the linea alba, and then they go sideways again through the uterus to get the baby out. And this actually seemed like it was a little higher up. It was down here, but you got a lot of this part of the skin that used to be down here. Those little lines will go away. Those aren't really scars. Oh, and uh, this, this, what can you do? Massage them. Add a little lavender essential oil in there and ma massage them. You'll ultimately feel the red ropey part underneath, which are the adhesions. You tease them loose, gently. Okay, spiral line. This is another one of the uh, anatomy trains. This one goes around, okay? It spirals over to the back, and it goes right through there. That's the diastasis recti. Some of you may have experience with that. Hopefully none, but some of you may. What happens is when you're pregnant, it is especially a lot of times with, with thinner people, it is so big of a change that the linea alba literally spreads, and it doesn't come back. Fascia really doesn't stretch. It just gets little micro tears, but it can regenerate and heal. This one just did not. She's doing, this is a lady doing kind of a crunch, uh, half of a sit-up. So it makes the muscles flex, and it shows up where the, uh, uh, the Elenia alba is actually incontinent. It doesn't come together. It can be repaired. All these are problems that have solutions. Now, remember this again. I'm going to draw a circle around it. Right here. Okay, these are things to remember. You're going to see them again. Okay, again, the internal adhesions. After childbirth, even if you don't have a C-section, or if you've never even had a kid and you've had a history of uh, inflammatory pelvic disease, just, uh, you know, hard cramps and all that, all that is inflammation. Inflammation is the first part of the scar. So that's what adhesions are, little internal scars. You can get a little bit of a adhesions between the uterus and the bladder, between the uterus and the large bowel, between the large bowel and the inside of the uh, sacrum, low back. What is expresses, what, how it expresses is low back pain. 
The problem is back. The problem is up here, but the manifestation's in the back. So they get all the back treatment. And does anybody look up here? <clears throat> what does that mean to us? The better they get from the neck down, the better we look. And I tell them that when I start referring them to places. I can't fix all this stuff. But I said, the better you get from the neck down, the better I'm going to look because you're going to get better and get better faster. And none of them ever say, shucks, I'd rather get, get well slower. I really don't want to get that well. So just choose your words. Once again, I'm going to wear this thing out. This is where the, uh, these are where this is. The, on, the, on this fascia that we've dissected, that has been dissected, and then there's the tongue, and right through the incision. Okay, now this is a lady that's actually had a, a mommy makeover, and these are the scars, and these are the acupuncture points that are actually on a scar. And then, when you look at this part, there's about seven or eight acupuncture meridians that go right through it. And it will affect every one of them because it changes the uh, impedance of the flow of electricity through those uh, acupuncture meridians. Now, what about trauma without incisions? This lady had her natural childbirth recorded because she wanted to share it and let everybody know that you could have natural childbirth. Well, she had a harder time than she uh, thought she would. This is not an actress. And you can tell by the look on her face. It's not a good day at the office. Now, if you treat TMJ problems, what do you think's going on right there? Look at that sternocleidomastoid. Think that's going to affect it? And the answer is yes. I mean, if, <clears throat> if she didn't, if she was on the edge, that'd kind of take her on the other side of the edge. Look at this baby. This came out. Look at that foot. Okay, she's not going to be that way forever, but with a little help, it's going to get straight a lot faster. What about this one? That's the front of the knee right there. That's the back of the knee. That's a frank breach. There's the rib cage right there. So I'm looking at that and thinking, that boy needs some therapy. <clears throat> All right, athletes. There probably will not even be a, a scar, at the most some abrasion. But that knee's about to hit. That boy's about to go down. And look at this. That's a wrench and a twist and this. Okay, Everybody doesn't have those kind of falls. But I tell you about athletes, they're strong, they're flexible, they're agile. So what will happen is she'll get, she'll get well fast and then she'll get back on the ice and do it again. So I mean, it's the good news and bad news. Good news is they heal fast because they want to get back to their next adventure. Bad news is they have a lot of adventures. <clears throat> and all of them don't end well. Okay, here's the woman part of it that applies to women more than men. <clears throat> Wearing a bra. It's not a bad thing to wear a bra, but it does have its side effects. This is the upper outer quadrant of the breast, right where the, that's a sentinel node for some uh, introductory carcinoma. There is the lymphatics. 75% of the breast problems happen in that upper outer quadrant. We're going to look at this in just a minute and see what happens with the bra. Okay, there's a, there are the red marks when you take the bra off. There, there, there. And here are the acupuncture meridians. You can see right where they're going to be pressed on it all day long. Is it, is it sedating or stimulating? And again, the circulation that goes right in this area. And the idea is not to not wear a bra. It's just you rub the red marks when you get through. Okay, here's another one. You know trigger points? Okay, trigger points are hyper irritable spots. Direct compression or muscle contraction can elicit to local tenderness and referred pain, which usually responds with a pain pattern distant from the spot. In other words, it triggers something that goes somewhere else. So there's the serratus anterior right there, the trigger point. Or does it hurt? Right here. How many times have I seen somebody going and going like this? Like that. It's a woman. I, I, I'm a doll. Sorry. It took me seven years. I was married seven years when I finally saw my wife going to take a shower. And I said, Pat, does that hurt? Because she had the red marks back there. 
She goes, no, you don't think of it. Just don't think of it. Get used to it. But you can stimulate trigger points. Now, let's go to the next one. Okay, remember that trigger point. Right here. Right there. And this has, this sends referral patterns right up into here. Right where you get TMJ headaches. So, is it all TMJ? No, it could be like TMJ plus some trigger points, and it's like one plus one equals three. Just one more thing to help us get our, our improvement level a little bit better. Here's the other thing. Straps. Whether it's a bra strap or whether you always carry your bag on the same shoulder, you're going to carry a bag. Just take turns. Carrying your baby always with the same hand like this. Take turns. Carry it over here for a while. Let's feel strange. But get used to it. Otherwise, you're going to grow up crooked. Don't want to be crooked. Okay. Circulation. Rub the red marks. Massage them. Just rub them. We, guys, we'll take a wristwatch off, and it's got a little red there. We rub it a little bit, and then go about our business. Do something. Something's better than nothing. Okay, airway. No oxygen, no chi. That means no chi is life force. No oxygen, you die. You get heart attacks and strokes. Just to shuck it on down the cob, as my father-in-law used to say. Ferrix, tonsils, and adenoids. Tongue ties make it worse. Tonsils, you know all this stuff. The bigger the tonsil, the less the airway. Same for adenoids. Now, we can't see these when we look at them clinically. We can see their tonsils. But you can see them on a ceph and you can see them on a cone beam. Again, Malin Poly score can have a really good airway. I had one the other day, <clears throat> a one, class one airway, and class three plus tonsils. Still can't breathe, even though that airway's good. Okay, what do you see there? The tonsils. Now, back teeth are touching. Where'd that come from? Thumb sucking? Sippy cups? Nah, kid can't breathe. Especially with the tongue tie. Makes it harder to breathe. Can't get that. Where'd I go? Can't get this tongue back out of the throat. Sorry I'm clumsy with this one. It's not my own. But that's not an excuse. That's a reason. Okay. Here's the same kid. Seven months after a tonsillectomy. No intervening treatment. Didn't do anything. Now. She's still going to have to have some expansion. Yeah, it's a little tight. But it's better than that. So we're going in the right direction. All we got to do now is do a little expansion. Tongue, you know this one. One, two, three, four. The sixth grader could tell you you need to release that one. Release that one. And this one, if there are symptoms, it's not just an anatomical diagnosis. It's that plus what's going on in their lives. Here's a good one. I know Bill's seen these before. This kid's 19 years old, twice orthodontics. And this is what, this is a result right now. Okay. Maxilla still does not cover the lower teeth. Open bite. Nobody ever looked at the tongue. Still going to have to have some braces again. But get that tongue released, at least it won't collapse again. So what do I do with this information? Oh. One thing I want to also say is use the word of relapse. If it relapsed on a four by cuspid extraction, then it would open back up and you'd have spaces in there where those teeth used to be. That's a relapse. What a collapse is, it's like that picture in there where they've already had braces and it gets even more crowded. So that's a collapse. What's making that collapse? That's what we go after to figure out what to do about it. Okay, what do you do with this information? One. Do what you're trained to do. You don't have to know everything. Just do what you do. And I'll take Michael Gelb's daddy into this. He could do more with his Gelb appliance than most everybody else could do with every appliance they could think of. And people would use it and say, this thing doesn't work. You know why it didn't work? It's because Harold Gelb wasn't using it. It's like somebody that can play one song on the piano. And it can sound like everything from happy birthday to a wedding march because he's real good at it. 
So be real good at whatever you do and do that. Do that first and then think of what you might need to do next. Okay, if results are not favorable, look at their health history. See what else is going on and either treat them or refer them. Still not better, look at the airway. Refer, now one thing that I didn't put in here that I should is expand. Then, if I doesn't get it, then send them to the other. That's where you use some judgment. If they got big giant tonsils, you can expand them all the way to California and back. And it's still not going to give them enough room if they got big giant tonsils. All right, teeth. These are things you already know way more than I do. Metal fillings, crowns, missing teeth, decayed teeth. Okay. What is that? You all guys know how to do that before you even came in this room. And then, still not getting better, look for a restricted tongue tie, restricted tongue, tethered tissues. Treatment, structural. Scanar, microwave therapy, massage, chiropractic, laser, can read all this. Different things, exercise. Metabolic, acupuncture, essential oils, diet, hormone. Treatments, airway, we just got through doing that. Teeth, we saw that, restricted tongue. If you don't know how to do these yet, study it. Call me. I'll tell you. If I can do it, you can do it. I don't know what to look for. Well, it doesn't matter. Just keep looking. When you start looking, you'll start finding the stuff you never knew to do. Just keep looking. Here are the references. Read this stuff. Watch those videos. That's what I did. I'm not real sure how to work my tractor. I got some videos on it. I came home one day and my wife said, we're going to fix the dryer. I said, how do you know how? I've been watching video. And she stood there and told me exactly what to do. And it worked. Isn't the internet nice? Okay. There's the, the videos, websites, book references. Again, if nothing but the pictures, look at them and it'll make you smarter. Uh, Facebook sites, what's really nice about this you read some of these things, and you'll see what the women are talking about, what their questions are. And then you go, ooh, maybe I can address that. And you think how you think. And then they will, uh, you will, you'll get a better idea and be more prepared when they come in. And let me tell you, the biggest thing about uh, tongue ties, phrenectomies, anybody can do that. You can cut a phrenectomy with a Swiss Army knife or fingernail clippers. Okay? It's nice if they're clean. But the point's not just cutting them. The biggest part of it is talking to them. Our, our people will call, I'll call up and check them some nights. Say, your staff is so, they never say, Stace, you're really good. They don't know whether I mean good or not. All they know is do they like you and do you hurt? Okay? But they tell me how nice my staff was and how well taken care of they felt. That's what makes them successful. And then you tell them up front, it's going to be a bad night. The first night after phrenectomy, it's, I, I tell I got no advice. It's going to be a tag team. Just wade through the night. Tomorrow will be a better day. Because nearly always, when they know that, then they're ready for it. Otherwise, you're giving them an excuse. All right, I'll quit yakking. Okay. Look at there. That thing stayed. It's supposed to be gone. Anyway. Did that go? Nope. Anyway. Robert Lang, you know who that is? I didn't either. Never heard of him. He was a NASA scientist. Rocket propulsion, literal rocket, rocket scientist. He got uh, so obsessed with, with origami. The one thing that had never been done is to have a way to fold a scorpion. Well, it's a smart guy, and he was going to do it. So he ended up, I mean, he'd been working a long time. He had the, the wherewithal to do it. So he quit working and went into full-time origami. He got a computer program and programmed it to help him learn how to fold a scorpion. And he did it. Later on, he was asked to fold a satellite to get it into a space shuttle. And then later he was asked how to fold a heart stent. I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit. Where's my? I should have a eraser on here. Get that off. I'll have to learn that another day. <laughs> but anyway, oh, look, it turned highlighted. 
Don't give somebody a new tool you don't know how to use. Okay, so what happened? He folded up a satellite into a space shuttle, and then he folded a heart stent so he could deliver it intravenously up to place a heart valve, and then folded an airbag. And that takes us back. One of the major applications for piezoelectric is how does an airbag deploy so fast? There's a crystal in the bumpers. As soon as it's distorted, sends an electrical current, deploys the, face, the uh, uh, airbags. But not slow, it's instant. The speed of current. Now, you know how airbags work. You just didn't know you'd get this stuff today, did you? Here's his quote. Almost all innovation happens by making connections between fields that other people don't realize. I'm not that smart, but I've learned this thing and learned this thing, and I think, I wonder if that could work in my office. I wonder if that could work with this. That's kind of what I do, but not, not on this level. Don't, don't, don't hear that. Okay. What do we do? I don't know, but my computer quit changing. Let's try this. There we go. Change the way you think. Now, step out into the learning zone out here. Not, not the crazy zone, not the panic zone, not the stupid stuff zone. Just a little bit out of your own comfort zone into the learning zone. And never become weary in doing good. So, don't settle. Aim high and always, always be extraordinary. Thank you a lot. Have a great day. Thank you.